Cool. Hey guys, and welcome back to Anything Goes with Sanaya and Leah. So just wanted to start off before we're going to go into Sanaya's show, of course, but just wanted to start off by saying that we've got 100 followers on the Instagram page. So we just want to say a massive thank you. Um, Yeah, I feel like that's quite cool, isn't it? 100 followers. It is mental because like, that's, if you think about it, if you have 100 people in the room, that's a hell of a lot of people. Do you know what I mean? Like, so thank you guys so much for obviously following us and you know listening to the podcast we we appreciate it now we're going to go up to 200 and hopefully by this time next year we'll have like 1000 2000 followers and loads and loads of listens to the podcast <laughs> yeah which is cool so yeah thank you and if you don't follow us go and follow up <laughs> no <I'm joking. laughs> we give you so much shit over this podcast about not following us we get about 600 views or listens so there's still fucking hundreds of you who's not following us on the Instagram. So what the fuck are you doing? Oh, so yeah. Please. Um, so we need to talk about your competition because obviously Sanaa competed at the weekend in the um in her first show. So we're gonna do a little a little show day overview, round up, your thoughts on show day, etc. So yeah, I'm gonna hand over to you do you want to do like a little um an interview style so I'm not just oh, like yeah. completely like talking about like just okay. talk- so basically I don't feel like I'm doing a solo podcast just talking okay. about me 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 <laughs> well, I don't mind I want to hear about it as well um <laughs> so do you want to just do um a bit of a so what show did you do what category did you do I'm sure most people that follow this podcast would have already seen that but just a little intro to kind of where what happened category yeah yeah Hundred percent. So I competed last weekend. It was about two days ago now. I competed in the northeast, which was in Newcastle. Which, by the way, is three and a half fucking hours away from me, and that was just vile, yeah. vile journey. Um, I'm not a massive like. I I love being a passenger princess in Reese's car. I'm not a massive fan of it in anyone else's car because I just get bored. I just don't like long hours and journeys anyway. So that was boring um but it was my bikini Mm. debut um if some of you don't know I competed in toned figure last time and I have now I'm now moved into the category bikini um so I did junior bikini in northeast um and there was four competitors which was exciting because I didn't know if I was actually going to be competing against anyone because in the show that Reese did which was the week before my show there was one competitor in it so I I was like it was just one so I was like crikey I mm. want to compete against people because I want to know what I have to bring out better like I don't just want to get a win because you know by uh default that's what yeah. I get um I got second in the show which I'm quite happy about I'm quite happy about so definitely room for improvement to ensure that I'm I'm competitive so yeah what a fun experience oh my god it was incredible like it was just I just briefly said to Lee I said I won't talk too much because we'll do it for the podcast um but the difference between my first showing in my first season to this one I just forgot how much I fucking loved it like I forgot the like I just forgot about the whole experience even though you try and remember it I just enjoyed the stage time a hundred times better and obviously it helped so that I competed before so I knew exactly what I was going to. I felt right at home because the only federation I'd competed at is PCA. Um, and it was just, I just loved it. Backstage was so fun. Like, obviously we had, it was a really small backstage. It was really, 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 really tiny. Like it was like a kitchen. It was really fucking weird. Um, but everyone was like, why are you so calm? Why are you so chilled? All that kind of stuff. And I was like, because mm-hmm. last time... I just was stressed out so much. I didn't enjoy it. And I'm sure you're the same. Like you just, things go quick, 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 quick. And then you're done and you're like, oh. Yeah. I did. yeah. Um, and I was just listening to Black, listening to music, helping the girls out with their bikinis and all that kind of stuff. Being like the the backstage mum, they call, someone called me the backstage mum. <laughs> and I was like, I'm 22. I'm not quite sure I qualify. <laughs> 
Um, but it was just so much fun. Like, I also forgot how fucking tiring it is on stage. Yeah. Like, I need to work on my posing CV because I was puffing. People must think, like, you pose so often, you know, like, it must be really, really, really kind of, like, good with your posing fitness. Crikey. Because you've got adrenaline, you're focusing on smiling, putting a show on, posing, like the breathing aspect, you just forget. And I could tell like my core wasn't as tight as I like looking back at the footage because I was just like, (laughs) like trying to like not do it. But yeah, all I'm saying is bikini girls have it harder when it comes to posing, actually creating some sort sort of stability in the pca side poses when your feet are this close to each other and one's on the tip of the toe so fucking hard especially when you're nervous Mm. bigger both feet are planted you can sit into the pose really really nicely a hats off to you bikini girls i didn't when you're nervous it when you're shaking which i definitely was it's so hard to keep balance so fucking hard in bikini poses i really underestimated it yeah, because I guess like when you're just practicing, you're not really like obviously you don't have any nerves there, do you? So you're just like nice and stable. I'm like la 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 la, I'm posing really really well. And also, <laughs> what I found is like because I was like so like I wasn't I was I had a lot of adrenaline. Of course, I was nervous. I wasn't as nervous as my first time, but when I'm nervous and I'm smiling, my cheeks start to do this. Do yours do that where you're like trying to smile and your yeah. face is just like, I don't know what's going on, but something was face going on with my face. face. I was like, <laughs> like this. I was like, I need to stop smiling with my teeth. I was like, I couldn't figure out what was going on. And I was like, I was oh, right in front of Kayla. And I was like, is she looking at my lips? I don't think it's noticeable, but you know when you can feel your like face yeah. just like, yeah. have you had that before? yeah your face like twitches I think it's because like you do practice smiling like Dan always Dan always said to me it's like you need to smile in your check-in like videos because you need to smile on stage it'll just like come second nature but when you're on stage you're like extra smiley so your face starts like cramping up and then you get but I got like cramp in my neck and I was like oh honestly but like because obviously like it's cheesy grins and I generally the smiles on that stage were not fake but I emphasized them a lot more. And it got to the point where I was like, if I actually carry on smiling with my teeth, it's going to look like I'm talking on stage. So I had to just go, I had to calm my face down yeah. because I was like, Kayla's looking at me and I have a feeling she's noticing the jitteriness of my mouth. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> honestly, honestly, so, it was horrific. Let's talk about, so outcome of the show judges feedback that sort of thing let's go through all that and yeah okay Okay. so obviously I went to go I went to compete to win yeah obviously that happened people class second as a win but for me personally it I was I was very happy with the result I was happy with the result given the physique that I brought and what I mean by that is the girl who won Libby she was insane. She had the glute ham tie in, you know, she literally two weeks ago competed with PCA before. So they already knew who she was. Um, she won the overall in that as well. So she's a very high class competitor. And I do not knock her for winning at all. She deserved it 100%. If I had brought a leaner package, do I think I could have beat her? We'll see. Do I think, you know, like, I should have brought better 100% and the only reason why I'm a bit fuck's sake about the second is because I knew weeks ago that I needed to come in a lot leaner um and it was just quite infuriating that I didn't push hard enough to kind of get that yes it was my warm-up show so we didn't want to bring 100% but I don't even feel like personally for me that we brought 80% I feel like we brought 70% which is not what I wanted um so we kind of just live and we learn from that like I knew I've said it how many times on Instagram I need to come Lena I need to come Lena I need to come Lena and it's so hard to figure out what what the judges are looking for because she was so shredded she made me look so much softer than what I actually was if you put me up against who kept the girl who came third and fourth 
I like condition wise mm. I was very on par with the girl who came third mm. but I would have looked a lot leaner if she wasn't there um but that what we're she saying was before, so like shredded. it depends who turns up on the day exactly yeah. because she was so shredded I look back at my photos and I'm like fucking hell I feel like a potato but I'm not a potato yeah yeah do you know what I mean um she was insane she was so lovely backstage gutted I know I need to bring my lower half in the feedback was everything about me was spot on my posing um they did say um Emma did say something like choose posing that better suits you um but I've seen that on a lot of feedback forms so I'm not just sure if that's kind of like one pose that I hit that maybe didn't yeah. suit my physique but it's a shame that they don't unlike two bros they don't actually specify it they just make you yeah, guess how do you know exactly you could, would you could you go and find out do you think they would say like they're not or... allowed to they're not allowed to give you if I was to go to her directly they're not allowed to give you anything that they haven't given you yet already oh, really no and it's really frustrating because two bros are very specific about it because they want you to get better but with pca it's so generic it's like okay what pose yeah because i have two options for a side pose that i'll happily hit the other one or is it the power pose that i chose do you not like that on me i love it on me but if you don't like it tell me and i'll change it yeah so it's very hard to kind of i'm not going to change anything i'm just going to keep hitting what I'm hitting with the posing because I feel like that is what brings out my best and I am a posing coach and I I have that level of understanding if she was to tell me now I have a feeling it's either the front pose or she wants me to do the other side pose but at the end of the day like I I don't want to change anything just Hmm. so really really hard because they're not being specific with the feedback which is a shame um but it, it is what it is so she said like that it was that my upper body development my upper body condition was perfect my structure was really really good they absolutely loved my bikini everyone on that stage was wearing a blue bikini but me and I think that really really stood out I fucking loved my look like yeah you made glam- it again Oh yeah. my god! I fucking lo- I felt like such a brunette Barbie. I was yeah. like, I'm feeling myself. Um, they really, really liked the contrast of brunette hair and pink and stuff like yeah. that. The only improvement that they said was basically you need more conditioning throughout your lower with the glute development as well. So basically, I just need to come in more shredded. And everyone knows that with PCA, they do like a more conditioned look. But I feel like bikini, the bikini category is really, really difficult as a kind of gauge because you don't want to be too shredded to the point where you get put on trained bikini, but then you don't, you want to come in really, really, really full. You want the glute ham tie in. And I had almost a glute ham tie in, but because this girl was ridiculously shredded, my glute ham tie in looked somewhat pathetic. Yeah. And it's really hard because her look was completely different to mine. I was full as a house. I, uh, uh, You know, there's so many, there was so many, we had two very different physiques and it is just so noticeable that they do go for condition 100%. Um, and it's, it's, it's just one of them, like, the, you know, the feedback. As soon as I came off that stage, I knew it. As soon as I saw her backstage, Libby, if you're hearing this, in my head, I thought, fucking bitch I was like she's got the glute and ham tie in what a bitch I was like fuck sake I haven't got that I was like I wish I was you in the most like in the non most negative way yeah, yeah. it was a good you fucking bitch <laughs> um and I was like fuck. I was like if they go for condition you have it babes because you've brought that and you should be very proud of like the physique that she, she brought. did look in- like she did look incredible well, like she looked phenomenal hundred percent and do I think I deserve second place absolutely will I try and do everything to make sure I'm better than her absolutely yeah of course yeah um, when they're coming away from a show it's like right let's get better like that's the goal isn't it between twos exactly and will I compete against her again I don't know but if I ever do I would absolutely love to have a a round two ding 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 (laughs) she's only 20 as well so yeah I saw that I couldn't believe it I know I was like what I mean I was she's really young yeah she's literally the same age as me when I first competed yeah so um so yeah 
she was it was it was it was it was a really really good experience you know like I really really enjoyed it the whole you know what like the whole team behind me Beth and that they made it so chill like it was unbelievably chilled I didn't I nothing really changed in my routine like I don't feel that post-show kind of up and down now I think if I had won and it was a celebration I probably yeah. would have felt a lot different because I know that I have work to do and I didn't really celebrate it entirely don't get me wrong on the drive I was so happy coming off stage and then on the drive home things just started to hit me a little bit because even like even though I didn't announce my dates and stuff leading into that show I felt an immense amount of pressure to do well because obviously with my season prior I never lost never yeah. came second yeah. won my British title and I was like surely I've got to and it does build pressure because you put an expectation on yourself as well because you're like well like you you won the British like that's a big achievement right so in your head you put that pressure on yourself to be like well if I've done that like I've got to win again because otherwise like at a regional yeah in my head I was like at a regional yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm B&B at a regional, I'm B&B at a regional, I aced it, won the overall, then won the British. Yeah, so but the girl like, that you were against at the regional could have gone and won a pro card at the universe later. So it's like, you never, you, exactly. you never know, yeah, that's what I mean. Exactly. And this is why it's, it's you just have to, like, I said to Beth, actually, so I was like, you know what, I'm not even nervous about, like, actually going on stage. I'm fucking nervous about my posing. I was like, if my posing isn't tip top and I don't show to my girls, how good I am I've got nothing to preach here um I was I'm more nervous about making sure that my girls are proud of my posing so that they can look up to me and go I'm so proud of her for being my posing coach that's my posing coach this is why she's my posing coach she's good at what she does she flows really well she has insane confidence when in reality I'm like I have confidence but I'm also very nervous at the same time and I think because people view me as a posing coach they think everything about my posing is absolutely perfect and I make zero mistakes I made so many mistakes on that stage like so many mistakes on that stage given as well (laughs) (laughs) but like I was like I almost fell over like three times I didn't hit a glute pot properly like I rushed my eye walk a little bit um there's so many things like it was more so like I was like right I need to I hate to say it but like people are inspired by my posing people look up to my posing so I was like I need to reach their expectation yeah. of what they view from me does that make sense yeah yeah and could you build like your business obviously like your business is your baby like you want to it's like representing that so you want it to be like on point don't you yeah and because yeah. Kayla and Emma was on the um, judging panel, I was like, these two girls are posing coaches as well. So I yeah. know that they're going to be critically analysing my posing. Yeah. Like, they are going to be like, she's a posing coach, so she must be good. Do you know what I mean? And I'm like, yeah, even yeah. though they're lovely, I'm like, fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> yeah, they are. They're, I, look, they're, I think them two are like the nicest people ever. A hundred percent, but you know, just that immense amount yeah. of pressure. Like, because I had people coming to watch me as well. I had a few clients there, um. So I was like, I need to, I need to put on a show. Yeah. I feel really happy with my stage presence. I know there's, I, I'm gonna come out of everything and say there needs improvements, as anyone should do. But overall, I really, really liked the way that I was. I thought I'd be like more kind of jittery like my last two shows but I really did feel right at home which is good like that's exactly what you want going into like because I think people always see you as well as like super super obviously you are experienced but super experienced like but actually it's your second like it's your second yeah Yeah. it's like I just never I just always forget that you know what I mean so did um I was getting my tan done by the way great experience enjoyed every moment of it genuinely when you get to that point no one gives a fuck that you're literally half naked your fanny flaps are hanging out every we- <laughs> genuinely I was like they're like stripped down I was like oh my god I'm pretty sure about six bodybuilding or physique men saw me stark naked with my hair net on right when I got my base tan coat we were in a really really small gym right 
and they have these plastic sheets coming up, down yeah? yeah and they stick them with tape and this was basically the only barrier from this tape uh this this plastic sheet that's not see-through it's like slightly misty yeah. was the only thing that was stopping them from seeing me and me from seeing them there's there was fans in there and basically the fan just yeah. got too much and the plastic <laughs> oh, no. skin came off <laughs> And all I'm there, you know, just drying, hands up in the air, <laughs> having a good old giggle. And I see, like, a few men just, like, gathering. They weren't looking in my direction, but they were waiting to come on in. And all I do, <laughs> I'm like, <gasps> and I literally, like, <laughs> I literally run into one of the booths. But then, like, everyone was like, oh, my God, oh, my God. And they were, like, trying to get everything up. But I was, like, ducking because there wasn't really much place to hide. Yeah. So I was like, oh, my God, oh, my God. So I have no idea <laughs> if anyone saw me start naked. Probably. However, that can happen. <laughs> I feel like no one even cares at that point. Everyone's just like, meh. <laughs> yeah, literally. And they were like all just like crumbling, trying to get it on there. But I was like, there was a, there was a few. There was one of my coaches, one of my clients, um, partners there who I know who is literally in that group as I walked out I was like looking at them almost like did you just get a good look did you not you know trying to like see their face like yeah. oh here she comes. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's brilliant. But that was a great experience Fun times. Um, but to be fair like you're so dark you can't even see anything like my my tan was the same color as my nipples yeah um yeah, that was a great experience for the tanning. I didn't even know how I got into that. <laughs> I honestly don't even know that. What about um so so goals going forward then? So you got your feedback. Yeah. I know you're not maybe gonna say if you announced any more shows, what are you doing? So I've announced one one show which is the two bros on the 27th. So I'm going to be competing, okay. not this weekend, the weekend after. I had a lot of girls saying, um, are you going to be doing the PCA universe? Are you going to be doing the PCA universe? And to be honest, I'm competing at two bros that weekend. It probably is just going to be, you know, quite stressful. Yeah. Never say never, but at the end of the day, two bros is my main goal. Um so the Solfo and plus Manchester, Coventry, it's a it's a long distance away. So don't yeah. know basically the question okay. to that. Uh, it really just depends on how everything's going. Um we'll see. We'll see. Like it's not it's not <clears throat> for certain. Makes sense. Yeah. So goals moving forwards. Basically with my prep, um, we have I have now asked Tom to basically do give me cardio because we need it. So I'm doing 40 minutes pre, like, sorry, I'm doing 40 minutes fasted with my weighted vest on, doing 16K steps, weighted vest on. I'm doing 20 minutes post, well, it was originally going to be like 45 minutes just cardio, like that's it, yeah. as soon as I wake up. But I said to Tom, no fucking chance I can do more than that so we basically said I can don't get me wrong I don't really fancy doing an hour a.m straight up um it would be quite nice to split it up because I feel like my sessions aren't long um you know I really kind of want to get a sweat on before I pose because I don't sweat in my sessions because I'm just not yeah. I'm not training that hard like I'm really struggling with training at the moment just motivation and just like the actual fatigue build up within a set itself is just ridiculous and then you add in the mental aspect that I'm like my body doesn't want to do this yeah. um so we've implemented 20 minutes post session as well um just because we we our aim is to lose about a pound every day if we can mm -hmm. so no carbs just vibes on rest days minimal carbs um situated no carbs before my training session um carbs after post-workout so carbs post-workout and then basically just because my sleep has been really fucking shit like lately it's I mean post-show it was great I got nine hours but that's because I had a full belly full of pizza yeah um yeah. we can talk about my post-show after um 
but uh, I had really good sleep. But my sleep was really dire, very, very, very bad. And it was just making me really struggle throughout the days. So basically what he said is like, look, your training is pretty much in the dirt anyway. Like just train. We've got 12 days, like, you know, do as much as you can, but we're not going to favor your carbs towards the training window, like pre-training, because you're going to be trained. I train on one meal anyway. So he was like, if you're getting all your carb meals in in the morning, you're going to be fucking yes. starving that you did into bed. So he was like, right, you've got two carb meals, one post-workout, you're training early anyway. So you've already got some carbs in from your last your last meal anyway. He was like, mm-hmm. have your carb meal leading up to either meal four or meal five um just so that you're going to bed with some sort of satiety and that you can actually go to sleep without being starving and I was like good because I was going to suggest that because I do think that that works better for me like and good sleep is so important for me to have a good day um so that's so probably going to have a better effect on your training performance than having a bit of carbs before you before you train it if you're getting better sleep isn't it so it makes sense exactly and it's not a lot of carbs anyway mm. so it's not even like it's going to better my training performance if it's going to better it it's going to better it by two yeah, percent but at the end of the day like I'd rather 20 percent extra sleep leading yeah. into a better session but yeah. I'll still have some sort of carbs in me probably leading up to um my training session anyway um but yeah no at the moment one day so one day back on the plan um second day actually doing cardio feeling good yeah it's it, I don't quite hard now, though. <clears throat> yeah yeah um which I really wanted to do I really didn't want to be doing this like this close to show like I wanted to be pushing when I had the energy to push and pushing yeah. when I when like weeks before and it's just a learning curve like people think like every prep's got to be perfect no prep's perfect you always learn something new like I'm sure with you you probably learned something that you should have done better in every single prep that you've done yeah and also I feel like the coaches are learning as well like coaches are still yeah like I used to look at it oh my god like they know exactly what to do at every given moment like they're so amazing but yes they are they are good and obviously they're very good at what they do but a coach is still looking at you thinking right we'll try this and we'll see what this looks like and then we'll they're still like kind of you know just doing they're learning yeah 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 and also the more coach, I've been... sorry, on, sorry. i was just gonna say no, the, more no, you... coach, the more a coach like works with you the better they know you do you carry no you carry. Uh, you go no you go yeah so the, like the coach is still getting to know the client and obviously like when it's new category as well it is a bit of like a you just have to go in and test the water don't you a bit 100 percent. and not to mention even though i've been with tom four years like this whole prep's completely different yeah. we've got i've started in a different position i'm doing a different category i've had literally seven weeks less time to get ready you know i've done this i've done that like the whole prep is completely different um and it's it's one of those things where like every prep anyone and everyone is learning and if you're not learning then you're not clearly thinking on how to improve um so it's just one of those like that's why we did this warm-up show because god almighty if I turned up to two bros the way that I did at PCA I think I would have a nervous breakdown like because that is not the condition we want for two bros and that's my main show so it's like right we peaked really really well like I was full I looked great I kept my pump like I felt really really good now we've just got to trim away some of this fucking fat and 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 same old same old like we did nothing special like we had two rice cakes like you guys will see in my show day video vlog or whatever like we did nothing special we had literally rice cakes and chicken vitamin c and coffee and water yeah. literally every two and a half hours and that just kept me going so yeah. it was it was very very simple like, I don't know about you but on show day like obviously you probably are a little bit different because you're obviously starting a little bit earlier so you probably only have one or two meals prior to yeah. show right I had quite a lot of food leading into the universe so I had um I, I had like my low day the day before but then I had a massive bowl of oats yeah yeah for bed 
And then in the morning, I was actually really shocked when Dan sent me my show day food because I was like, God, this is a lot of food. Like, is this going to be okay on my stomach? But obviously, because I was competing at like three or four, I think I had like 60 grams of oats, a banana and like 20 grams of peanut butter in the morning and some whey. So it was actually like a pretty hefty meal. And then I had chicken and rice, chicken and rice, and then chicken and peanut butter or rice. No, it was rice and peanut butter. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So oh, I where were you on later? Oh, you were like pro. No, it was like three, it was like three o'clock it was at universe or something like that. Why are you on that late? Maybe it was two o'clock. It was running a bit behind as well. But I was I on it. Like three meals. I think it was because it was such a busy show as well. It probably took them yeah. some time to get through it. But yeah, like nothing, nothing really changes. Like a lot of the time, like you'll load three maybe four days before then the day before your show you'll cut the food a little bit more just to kind of relieve some water weight and to really kind of get that tightness and then on the show you're basically just trying to keep the fullness and whatever carbs you need for that is what you'll basically have yeah um it's not like for example our peaks are completely different but we the peak was good it's literally like it's literally just the condition and that's why I feel kind of gutted about it because I knew I could have done so much more leading up to that show um and I feel like now we have learned cool great but it's almost like why didn't we do it before do you know what I mean yeah, you always wish I you had done it before yeah yeah because it's frustrating for you it, was it like would have been different but it's at least it's something you can change you know it's not like oh your structure's not right for bikini you know yeah, exactly. Like, I do believe that I am fit for the bikini category and I do feel like this is where I belong and I feel like I just enjoy... Obviously, it might change with two bros, we'll see. Um, but generally, like, I feel like I've got the structure. I feel like I've already got a good amount of muscle mass to be competitive within PCA bikini. What do I think I need to improve on? I think I need better glutes. I think I need more density throughout my lower half in terms of my quads uh, in terms of my glutes and hamstrings where I really I wasn't one of those gym girls that actually liked training glutes or legs for ages when I first started I was an upper body girl like genuinely loved training chest I loved getting a shoulder pump yeah. it, I only started training glutes a year ago like I just like it, it just I think that's another reason why I'm really struggling to kind of get that I say struggling we're not we just need to work harder why it's not coming in as much is purely based off the fact I don't really have that much muscle there so it's not coming off as much as it would on areas that I have more muscle in so for example my quads are fucking lean yeah and your shoulders as well and your chest yeah and my back like my back yeah. is dry like I'm like actually if there's one thing that I'm proud of this time is how my back looks like yeah just I'm very happy with even my lower back like my lower back is like like you can see like lines coming yeah. out of it. Like I think it's proper cool. Like I really yeah, like I love it. it as well. Yeah, I like I love it. Um, but yeah, no, you like you live and you learn. You live and you learn. And I think one thing also to think about is like if you have something that you feel you need to bring in better throughout your prep, just because you have a coach doesn't mean that you shouldn't. If you're like I could be leaner, or if you're like this, this, and this ask your coach about it because I feel like you should have an input of your own prep and you should bring a physique that you want to bring in as well and if you speak to them about it they may tell you no we're fine yeah and you're genuinely fine yeah. but it might also give them that nudge of you can see yourself in person I can only see yeah. you on photos so maybe okay if you need to come in more conditioned we will because in some lighting I looked like I've had a really good glute hand tie in. Others, I yeah. really didn't. And when they put the, when I didn't have the glaze on me and I had that lighting that I put on a reel, my glutes looked great. I looked back at those photos and I was like, oh, we are in. Yeah. They put glaze on me and all of a sudden I just felt like I looked washed out from the glaze because they don't glaze you in specific areas. They just glaze your whole body. Yeah so like it just merged everything and then obviously being next to Libby who was just like shreds a lot um she uh she she just made me look like a potato so uh that's it oh, potato. 
um but no yeah that generally like felt really really good like post show not gonna lie I I was in two minds of even having anything yeah yeah like I don't know about you but do you almost feel like you should only eat what you des- when you deserve it when it comes to post show I I think it was hard when I competed because my shows were so far apart yeah that I was like I've literally got like four or five weeks so I'm gonna yeah, have yeah I'm gonna have a meal like I was like I didn't plan anything at all like I didn't even know what I was gonna have like I was half half like half of me was like I'm sorry Beth I'm actually just gonna have oats like I really just don't know how I'm gonna feel so plan cook all your food because I don't actually know if I'm gonna have one this was before I got second then I got to second place and I was like well I'm definitely having an Oreo grenade bar regardless I saw that on your story I was like oh my god <laughs> when you, you know what you know what cracked me up you know when I put that thing on my story box and I was like right I've got two off plan meals left before prep starts watch the hub and I was like you can tell us the eyes on prep because she was like she was like cookies burger pizza oreo and I was like oreo grenade bar I was like it's I've got an off plan meal I'm not having a not fucking oreo grenade bar no it's amazing <laughs> honestly I literally I was like naming everything that I was thinking about I was like right what could Leah want hmm. had dominoes Oh, yeah, yeah. so well, You know, when you get to that stage of off-season and your appetite is a bit shot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, like, yeah. had, like, three pieces and I was like, you know, I'm actually, like, this This is really not me at all, but I was like, I, I really don't, like, I'm really full. I don't want any more. I'm like that with Reese. Like, when I was deep into my off-season, like, Reese just eats because he knows he needs to eat. He's like, if I don't eat this pizza, I'm going to lose weight. So he has to eat yeah. all the pizza. But, like, with me, like, I was the same as you in my off-season. I was like... I, I have a medium pizza right I never get a large because I can never ever 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 finish it and I shocked myself after post show as well um and never finish it like I'll always leave a slice or two um and it's, it's because you just you, you're so full you've got yeah. so much food you just don't want it anymore yeah. um me but... and a lot. you are me and Will shared a large pizza I know I'm surprised for that from Will I know. Me too. No, he's been a minute. From Will. He's like, I don't, I don't, I'm not hungry. I was like, <laughs> right, well, we need to have something because you'll regret it. Um, but yeah, no, post show, um, I was literally like in the car. I was speaking to Tom. We were like calling and, you know, yeah. like we were just trying to basically figure out what our plan was moving forward. And I said to him, I was like, look, mate, like I'm really not asked about an off plan meal. I haven't planned anything. I haven't bought anything. I have obviously, um, bought an Oreo grenade bar and I've already eaten it so you can't tell me I have, can't eat it because I've already eaten it okay um but I was like if you want me to literally just have oats cream of rice or whatever like I'm really happy with that because I know like I need to dig and I really don't want to try and lose weight from an off-plan meal when I know I already need to come and lean out I was like I was like I really really not asked and I could see Beth's face she was like please 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 because she's dieting as well so I, I could see in her face she was like please have an off-plan please have an off-plan but I was just generally at the point where I was like, look, if it's not gonna, if it's not gonna move me forward, then sod it off. I'll have food later. Like I really couldn't give a fuck because food will come back to me in when I finish prep. Like it's not gone forever, kind of thing. And I was so I'm I still am so determined to bring back better. Um and he was like, No, you've literally eaten fuck all. Like he was like, I think you just need to have something to eat, yeah. have a medium pizza and a dessert um and you'll be fine trust me you'll be fine just don't be a cunt like last time and I really shocked myself we ordered the medium I ordered a medium Texas barbecue with added pepperoni and cheese stuffed crust really really lovely I got to four slices and I was like my stomach was like protruding out of here and I was like this is not sitting well with me I was like this this tastes lovely. Massive dip in <laughs> garlic mayo. Yeah, oh, that's, that's nice, like, isn't it? Honestly, I got. To, I was like, Beth, I'm full. I was like, four slices in, and I'm full. I was like, this is a mm. medium pizza, and she was just there scoffing it in, like absolutely fine. I was like, I'm struggling, mate, and I genuinely had to like just take a little sit down, and I was like, I have to finish the pizza though. I was like, if I don't finish this pizza, I'm gonna be really pissed off myself. Yeah. Um, so I finished it and then had some Domino's cookies um, me and Beth shared the Domino's cookies and we also because I was sharing the Domino's cookie I got like we also shared like a size of the cheese twists yeah I don't know if you know what they are 
Yeah. And then turns out didn't gain any weight. So I'm happy about that because I was so like Ooh. yeah um about it. Didn't get any weight um because I I done quite a lot that day obviously and eaten not yeah. a lot um literally gained no weight look was pretty good um and I went for a massive walk after if I can recommend one thing I don't know if you're the same if you have an off time meal post show don't no. plan anything but also go for a long walk after to aid digestion yeah, yeah I agree because your stomach shrinks there's a lot of grease in that food there's a lot of fat in that food and your stomach is like whoa yeah to be honest i i can't eat pizza after i've dieted because obviously there's so much cheese on it that i just can't my body just does not like it you know because i haven't eaten that much fat so i i tend to have like a burger so it's more like i mean i know with the burgers are still pretty fatty but i just i can't do i can't do the cheese post show i i fucking love cheese like I'm a cheese whore you know what though my stomach this morning it's not off at all I don't have a bad stomach or anything my stomach is still really really tight but I'm definitely my stomach is definitely like hold on a minute I don't quite know how to digest all of this fat like what's going on here um I was fine yesterday I had a bit of like I have no upset tummy at all just my passing through wasn't probably as normal without going into too much detail um as it usually is um yeah, yeah like generally like what is your protocol like post show like obviously like when it comes to like eating food and stuff like obviously we have to slightly briefly spoken about post show but like I know Reese for example he won't eat enough plan meal at all until he's zilch done like absolutely done like even if like he's got three weeks in between a show a month he won't he'll just have cream of rice or oats and he's absolutely happy with that um what's your kind of approach because I really like Reese's approach because I think that it still keeps you in that routine you're still eating food it doesn't upset your stomach it gives you that satiety where you're full because of the volume you can have like you know dark chocolate with it still and fruit yeah yeah or do you basically what I'm trying to say is do you think having a post-show meal is actually productive or do you think it's more for your mental state and also because it's a trend throughout bodybuilding I think because people see other people doing it they like then like expect to have an off-plan meal after they've done a show but it, obviously when I last competed I only did one show so for me it was it I just it had like, hurrah I had a burger, I had a five guys. So I always have five guys, right? Last two shows I've had five guys. So I had a five guys after and then I did just I just went back to my plan the next day, even though I'd done my prep. Whereas before, you know, when I did the British in 2021, I had four weeks between the qualifier and the British. And Dan said, have a meal out on the day of your show in the evening, and then you can have a day of off plan the next day. Do that. Not good. It was fine. I, like, I didn't go fine. mad. I didn't go mad at all. Like I had, I had, a co- I went out for breakfast. I went out for dinner, and I think I had some pasta at lunch. I think I had three meals, and yeah. but I, di- I didn't like binge or anything at all. It was just three meals. But so honestly, I felt horrendous. The next day, I was like, Dan, I've ruined all my work. What have I done? I've, I've like, I think I gained like four pounds. So it wasn't. It was obviously all water weight, and it all came off. But um, and because I, I had four weeks, and I was ready, right? I didn't. I needed to get a tiny bit leaner, but I was pretty much ready from the qualified to the British. So Dan was like, oh, just have a day off. And I was like, Dan, I'm never doing that again. So for the for the next one for the universe, we we're like, let's just have a meal. And then, cause I know in my head that I just can't, I mentally can't deal with not having that structure straight after I've done competing. Cause it just, it throws my head off. So like, I think for me this time, I think I'm okay with having one meal. I think I like having the meal after. And a few snacks. No, see, I just, I have to have just the one. I can't, I can't do it in my head. I just can't, because I'm like, where, where is the line drawn? Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, I have like a few extra rice cakes and a grenade bar on the drive home. Yeah, 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 that would be okay, I think. But for me, I'm like, I need to just go out, have the burger, have the chips, have a dessert. And Um, that's it. Yeah, so normally I have like a a burger, um, a, a cheeseburger, some chips and like a cookie box. And that's like, it's structured. And yeah. then, so I think, because this year there's five weeks between the shows, so I'm guessing Dan's going to say. It's a long time. 
But if it was a week or two, I don't know. I don't know if I would. I think I'd, I think it would get in my head. This is it. This is it. And this is where I was struggling with what the fuck to do. Um, I think next time I'm going to do the Resfit protocol, to be honest with you. I just don't think it's worth... I felt stressed the day of, then I saw my weight and I was fine. Yeah. But I just don't think it's worth it if I need to come and lean up. If I'm shredded and we just need to hold the weight, fine. Yeah, yeah. If it's like we need to dig, no fucking chance. I just think people need to stop expecting to have a post-show meal. I think if you need to come and lean up, I personally would probably prefer mentally and for a an actual ability to not go fucking mental between the shows because I've had that bit of relaxation to yeah. then go straight back into a prep again almost. That, it's all mental, isn't it? I think that's the... Because it's yeah. realistically, it's not going to do anything physique-wise, one meal. No, it's really, really not. And, like, you're probably better off of having your favourite meal in prep, which is probably oats, lots of yeah. fucking whey, chocolate, fruit you know your 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 skinny syrups like that is probably going to be so much better for you mentally but also in terms of taste wise still you'll enjoy it maybe just get like a chocolate bar put it in your oats like no like just that will be in return so much better than if you are trying to get leaner now if like for you for example you were already there it's not a major thing but if you're trying to get like I think what I'm trying to say is don't expect to have a post-show meal like don't look forward to that when you're in a prep yeah do you know what I mean because I feel like that's what gets people through a prep is knowing that they can eat literally <laughs> straight after their show I think if you focus on that you're you're probably not doing the prep for the right reason <laughs> yeah exactly but a lot of people do say that like a lot of yeah. I've heard a lot of people say that and it's like it's great but remember like you have the rest of your life with food <laughs> Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing, isn't it? And you know what? When I was younger and I, re- I was struggling with my relationship with food, that's what really, really helped me like move away from it. It's like the food is not going anywhere. Like that food is literally so readily available for the rest of your life. Like just focus on what you're doing now. Like it's not the food is yeah. always going to be there. I think that really helps when you want to prep. It's like when you're in, you know, you know, when you're in, a, you, uh, you can't fucking speak today you know when you're in like a social occasion with like your family and there's loads of food about and on prep you're just like not that bothered well I'm just like nah yeah, whatever I'm not I know a lot you're of people like, oh my God, you've got so much discipline like you're so strong-willed and I'm like it's it's literally like <laughs> I'm just <laughs> eating different food I'm just eating the only difference is is I've cooked it clean and I'm eating different food for you, to you like yeah. there's literally no difference like if you make your meals really really nice you yeah. absolutely sound like you're absolutely sound and like it really also does depend on your background like I feel like you've lived quite a disciplined lifestyle already with swimming and competing for a few years so you have found you know like you genuinely just could you already have learned that aspect of discipline me myself my dad was in the army you know we had meals at certain times I was very much into sport yes I wasn't disciplined with meal plan or whatever but I have done a season before um, and I have always had routine and structure in my life throughout my whole life. Like there's not been a moment in my life where it's like free for all. Yeah, uh, yeah. It was going out after school at four o'clock, coming back at six o'clock, eating that meal at half six, finishing that meal at quarter past seven, getting bath, getting ready, going yeah. to bed for nine. Like there was always that kind of structure. And also like, if you think about it, like, it's really not a long time without food and at the end of the day like if you're looking at your own food and going oh this is so shit in comparison to theirs stop it right now yeah yeah it's not a good not a good place to be honestly just think I'm enjoying my time with my friends with my family yes they're eating different food but I can literally eat that in two months yeah I can literally eat that in six months like it's not a very long time No. no it's just yeah I think yeah not making yourself have FOMO basically yeah it is hard and I definitely did experience it in my first show um but you learn each and every time you do it yeah and I think it was really good I think you put this in your post or you saw I can't remember it was but you put something about you and Reese having like date nights and like making them like prep friendly I think that's like really yeah. important to like plan stuff in with your friends and your family that doesn't revolve around food and drink because then you get to spend time with your friends and your family 
but doing things that aren't because it does get hard right I, I still struggle sometimes when you're in the back end of prep and you're starving and you're surrounded by food all the time like it is hard you're like yeah it is difficult not not to eat it like I'm not thinking about eating it but just being around it you're like it's just making me more hungry and like more food driving me focused more. yeah so it's really nice I think to plan things in that are just like you know like activities and like day trips and things that aren't yeah me and so important to that relationship <clears throat> like it's so important like you know, like you can go to the cinema, you can go bowling, you can go yeah. for a lovely walk or a hike, you can go watch a football match like me and Reese did. Like there's so many things that you can do. Like the date nights aren't going to a bar and drinking and eating. Like that's that's one out of loads of date nights. You can literally go for a spa day. You could yeah. literally there's so many things you could do like fucking you can go to Alton Towers me and Reese did that last time don't recommend it two weeks out fucks you up but you can go to like Alton Towers like you can do yeah. everything else that you can do apart from going to a restaurant people yeah. forget about that and it's so important because even though we're both in a prep like it's nice that we can both get away and just actually go I really it's really nice to get away from thinking I'm in a prep because it's so draining, man. That like, is so draining. Because it's all you talk about for like the whole time you're on prep. Because people like, even though they mean it in a good place, like house prep, house prep, house prep, and it's yeah, like yeah. I've answered this question a hundred times. It's going as well as it can be for a prep. Nothing to update you on. Preps a prep, eating less, doing more. I love that you're interested, and I really appreciate it. But you are the hundred and fiftieth person to ask me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I yeah. just don't want small talk. Ask me something other than my prep I've got loads of other things going on in my life right now <laughs> you know you know what I'm gonna do this year me and Will are gonna get um paddle boards because we've got the uh oh sorry someone just knocked on the door um we've got sorry bear with two seconds no worries. sorry guys just had to go and um take the car adulting off. adult job very adult job sometimes I do jobs right and I'm like god I'm such an adult now literally I'm like what? what we've just been sorting our, mor- our mortgage out because our house needs to be like our mortgage thing has ended um and I'm like god I managed to sort it out like I know <laughs> when you told me about that the other week I was like mortgage I still yeah. rent as a student well it's yeah it's I sometimes can't believe it but excited it but yeah. paddleboarding yeah so right we're gonna get paddleboards because we live next to the river and it's really flat and it's really wide and someone said to us apparently it's the best river to go paddleboarding on so one of our prep activities is gonna be we've got the do- <laughs> don't laugh we've got the dog's life jackets because obviously they're only little sausage dogs um so we're gonna put the dogs in the paddleboards <laughs> it's a fast river it's you but you're a crazy dog mum. i am but i don't care but I love that about you. Like, I genuinely love that about you. They're so cute. It's going to be so cute in their little oh, yeah. life jackets, but that's just fucking ridiculous. I just feel like they're so tiny. And I'm like, the current is like quite... Their little strong. legs won't be able to swim. No, and what if they, like, float off somewhere? So I want to just m- make sure they they can at least float. They don't really like swimming sausage dogs. Well, I mean, you can give it a go. So, yeah, that's, give it. Be, that's one of our uh, prep activities. That's it good. That's really good. Like uh, it's so important. Like friends, family, like me, Beth went bowling with one of our other mates and Reese. Like it, there's so many things you can do. And it's so important to continue relationships throughout your prep. Yes, you've got to be selfish, but yes, you've got to remember there's other people living in your life as well, and you're only gonna push them away. So don't be a twat. And I still like I remember when I was on my British prep, like I went away with my friends for a long weekend and we went to Chester. And like they went out for dinner, we went out for the day, we went to the zoo and they still went out for meals. But obviously I just took my prep bag out with me for the day. They bought lunch. I had my prep lunch. They went out for dinner. I ate before I went and then had a drink there. So you can, it, that was a bit of planning and I had to find a gym in the morning to like do cardio and stuff. But it, I still managed to go away like Friday to Sunday with my friends in a, like a UK city and stick to everything. Yeah, if you if you want to do it, you can do it. No. Would I recommend it if you're someone who's not a strong-willed and very good with structure? No. <laughs> if you're someone who who can who can do it and feels like they can, 100%. Because I know some some of my clients would go, that's the worst thing in their whole entire life because it's too stressful. And no, it might not be worth it. Yeah, no, 100% not. 
Um, but yeah, that is the wrap up. That is some advice on post show and thoughts as well. Um, we have had a few suggestions on kind of what people want us to talk about. We'll pop a question box on what topics you do want us to talk about. We've had some about, you know, eating disorders and like what kind of comes about with that when it comes to show and, you know, body image um, and stuff like that. Um, and I think that that would be really, really good. However, I do just want to say like there's only there's there's a few topics that will have really great knowledge towards. And then there's others that we definitely won't. For me, for example, um, an eating disorder isn't something that I can give you a lot of advice from. But from what I've seen and like, you know, what I've experienced post-show, I can give my advice on for yeah. that not sure about you but I do just want to kind of clarify there are certain topics that we may cover on here I do just want to mention that we are not doctors we're not nutritionists like you might actually be but there we are we're well within our field and don't take everything that we say as gospel basically because if we yeah. do talk about topics like that we don't want you to say oh but Leah and Sanaya said this so I have to do this yeah. because this is we we don't have that expertise what we can do with that as well is say right if you are someone that is struggling with um your relationship with food this is where you can get help so you know because I know there are coaches out there for example like Amelia Thompson who has her coaching that is based around like improving your relationship with food so there are coaches out there who specialize in working with people like that so we can maybe put some pointers out and in, into if you are struggling and maybe bring someone in actually for that topic yeah yeah that might work yeah because that 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 would probably make it a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, that's a good that's a good idea. So, yeah, I'm sure we'll do more podcasts like this because obviously, when you've done your next show, we can do like a little update on that. Winston, um, sorry, I've shut the door and is crying to get out. So, okay. yeah, we can we can obviously go through the next show and talk about that a bit more. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to see how the rest of it goes. Me too, me too. I, I'm excited too, and I'm I'm hiding my physique until my next show. Yeah. So that'll be that'll be good because I want it to basically be like a surprise attack of oh shit, she got Lena. Yeah. Shouldn't have said all that shit about her that she was a fat son of a bitch on stage. Not that I think that I was, but I know I could have come Lena, and I feel like a lot of people know I could have come Lena, and yes. I want to. I I don't want anyone to have any pre assumptions of me I want to kind of just go yeah do you know what I mean like good luck sorry dog carnage someone, there's someone at the back door and there's someone at the side I'm gonna have to go we're gonna have to wrap the podcast up guys because I've got sausage dogs barking left right and center sausage dogs are barking but thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to follow us on Instagram and we'll see you for the next one fab thanks guys bye